Welcome to County Report This Week. I'm on Quinette Crosby. Here's what's happening around the county. Coming up in the next half hour, how you can put your old bike to good use. More about the county's bike donation program. Plus, the fun and unique way Gaithersburg gets ready for snow season. And later, take a trip down memory lane. Check out the new exhibit about living in the county during the 1950s. But first, human trafficking is a problem across our country, and Montgomery County is not immune. This week, a new bill was signed into law that will establish a permanent commission to help combat the problem. Susan Kennedy has our story. In 2016, Montgomery County Police investigated 29 cases of human trafficking in Montgomery County. Three of those cases included minors. This week, County Executive Ike Leggett signed a bill introduced and unanimously approved by the County Council that will work to eliminate this heinous crime. I remain confident that working together, we can become even more protect, pr protective of our current and potential, uh, potential victims. And at the same time, we can become even a greater community and we can fight back the threats to human trafficking. Tom Hucker serves on the council's public safety committee. He says this bill will send a message to traffickers that the county is committed to fighting this enterprise. You know, I'm really glad I work with a council and a county exec that are so united to fight this. And the reason we need a commission is really because this is a fast growing, dynamic, changing uh, criminal enterprise. I mean, this, um, you know, slavery's been around a long time. But uh, unfortunately, this with the growth of the Internet and with all the, uh, the um, transportation up and down the I-95 corridor where, where Montgomery County is, um, that makes us a hub for this, uh, this enterprise. And uh, we need to send a really strong and unified signal to traffickers that we're using all the tools in our toolbox that you know to, to crack down on them that it's not welcome here in Montgomery County. It was a unanimous vote on the County Council and we all immediately knew that we need to do something in addition to what we are doing and we are doing a lot. Our police department is doing a lot. It's not just in Montgomery County obviously it's a international situation but we will do our best to correct it in Montgomery County. County police are working at all times to detect traffickers and make arrests. Assistant Chief Laura Lanham says this bill will help them continue to do their job. The committee started in 2014 and what this does is establishes something that has been working and, and that makes it so that we'll have it for the future and ensuring that we continue to have many voices and opinions and different looks at a problem. You know, it's great and, and important for us as the law enforcement community and certainly the expertise to go into the investigation. But there are a whole bunch of other people, you know, stakeholders in the community who can see things different ways and, and give different opinions and, and different insight into the issue so we can combat it and most importantly prevent future victimization. Reporting from Rockville, I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. This October marks 15 years since two men, known to many as the D.C. snipers, were arrested. My MC Media's Mitty Hicks spoke to residents about the tragic shootings, the arrests, and how it brought the community closer. The memorial dedicated to the 10 people murdered in one of our region's most notorious crime sprees, known to many as the D.C. sniper attacks, is being renovated at Brookside Gardens in Wheaton. I don't think anybody's really forgotten it. Once in a while the word sniper comes up and it immediately brings back uh, memories of those days. October 24, 2002 is the day John Allen Muhammad and Lee Boy Malvo were arrested. Fifteen years later, the memories are still haunting for people who live in Montgomery County. It was like three weeks of hell here. We were frightened. It's scary because you don't know uh, where these folks were going to shoot next. The random shootings took place at schools, grocery stores, bus stops, and even gas stations. Alex says he remembers being afraid to do anything. That kind of put an element of random fear. And I think random fear is kind of what drives people uh, to be most afraid because, of course, you don't know where uh, something could happen. 
one of the stations, the Shell Station on Connecticut and Knowles, is where I used to buy gasoline. It brought the event very close to home, or at least in those territories that we often frequented. It took three weeks for police to arrest Malvo and Mohammed. Today, Malvo is serving multiple life sentences at a maximum state prison facility in Virginia. Muhammad was executed by the state of Virginia in 2009. I think it made us all more aware that there is crime. If up until then, we just, it was so well, it was a random thing, and suddenly it seemed like it was really terrible. And uh, I think the community came together with that one. There was definitely a feeling of we're all in this together. Any of us could be a victim at any time. And I think that tends to pull people together. In Wheaton, I'm Mitty Hicks for County Report This Week. If you think someone might be abusing drugs or considering suicide, you can be the one to help save a life. There's a new campaign aimed at teens to discourage drug abuse and suicide. County Executive Ike Leggett, along with MCPS Superintendent Dr. Jack Smith, have launched this effort. The campaign incorporates the website BeTheOne.org, which provides tips on how to identify problems among teens. It also provides resources and information about treatment and recovery. The Be The One campaign is going to be important for our MCPS students because it gives them additional uh, information about how they can make a difference, how they can be the one that helps their uh, friends or helps their school community to, to end the, the, the uh, scourge of substance use uh, disorder or to prevent uh, a friend, a classmate, or themselves from falling to the, the idea that uh, committing suicide is the answer, because it's not the answer. It's a, a, a permanent solution to what is ultimately a temporary issue. Um, we think the Be The One campaign is going to be really informative. It's going to help kids to, to see and identify different resources. And ultimately, it's going to make a difference in their lives and in the lives of their school communities. The newly launched website is BeTheOne.org. Also, the county's 24-hour crisis center hotline is available to everyone. That number is 240-777-4000. Coming up on County Report this week, helping residents get around town on two wheels thanks to a county bike donation program and... I'm Montgomery Planning's Bridget Suiso at the Silver Spring Civic Building. We'll have the full recap of the third annual Design Excellence Awards when County Report This Week continues. Introducing Ride On Extra, coming to Route 355, fall of 2017. The bus with less stop and more go. Regular Ride On service has 80 stops between Lake Forest Transit Center and the Medical Center Metro Station. Ride On Extra has 85% fewer stops. Plus, Ride On Extra is all about the extras. Free Wi-Fi, USB charging ports, real-time info displays, and runs every 10 minutes. It's Ride On Extra. Less stop, more go. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm on Quinette Crosby. From the candy to the costumes, Halloween is always a fun time of year for the young and the young at heart. It's also a night to make sure you're playing it safe. Here to help us do that is Lucille Bauer from Montgomery County Police. Welcome, Lucille. What should we know about trick or treating? Well, Montgomery County Public Safety Agencies have some great safety tips. Most important, only trick-or-treat in neighborhoods and at homes that are known to you and homes with the porch light on. Plan the trick-or-treat route in advance. Give your kids a flashlight to carry, set a time when you expect them home, and make sure no treats are eaten until an adult has a chance to inspect them. Even an older child should not trick-or-treat alone, but younger children should definitely be accompanied by an adult or a responsible older sibling. 
and they're going to be excited. So talk to them in advance about using sidewalks when possible, crossing at crosswalks, and of course looking left, right, and left again before they cross the street. And the costumes should be flame retardant and bright. You can always add reflective tape to costumes and trick-or-treat bags. Uh, face paint is preferable to masks and keep those Disney princess gowns no longer than ankle length to avoid tripping. Everybody loves Halloween decorations, but make sure that you use battery powered candles instead of those with flames. Make sure your home and yard are well lit and that you have a wide clear path between the pumpkins and the potted mums and the gauzy spider webs. We do particular messaging to our drivers. You have to slow down. You have to be particularly watchful for the kids out. And if you're going to a party where alcohol is being used, don't drive. Lucille, those are all good things to know, but what about tips for people with pets? Right. Halloween can be a stressful holiday for pets. Make sure you walk your dog before trick-or-treating begins and know that chocolate and candy wrappers are hazardous to their health. It's best to keep them separated from the trick-or-treat activity. Put them in a separate room. We have lots more Halloween safety tips on the Montgomery County website under press releases. You'll find them at www.montgomerycountymd.gov. And remember, you can't have a happy Halloween unless you have a safe one. That's absolutely right. Lucille, thank you so much for joining us. All right, everyone, make sure you play it safe and happy Halloween. Riding a bike can provide fitness, freedom, and fun. That's why the Montgomery County Department of Transportation sponsored a bike donation event. Now residents of all ages are receiving the gift of mobility. Susan Kennedy has our story. Dozens of folks rolled into the county council building with their unused, unwanted bicycles with hopes of getting them back on the road with someone who needs them. The donation event was hosted by the county and the Rockville Bike Hub, a nonprofit community bicycle shop. So some people brought bikes that are from under their deck, you know, they've been sitting there for years and other people have brand new bikes and sometimes they've just never been used and so they maybe they bought them and intended to use them but it just never did. So then we've gotten brand new bikes and we've gotten a lot of bikes that need a lot of repair or can only be salvaged for the parts. And that's what part of what Rockville Bike Hub does is that they'll take apart the bikes and they'll use the parts or they'll fix the bikes that can be fixed. What community bike shops do is uh, teach people how to maintain their bikes, how to fix their bikes, provide space and tools and, uh, and knowledge and advice to help people learn those kinds of things. Uh, the idea is to educate people about their bikes, make them better consumers, um, make them more self-sufficient, and as, as a byproduct, they save a little money too. Many of the bikes donated are refurbished by the Bike Hub before they go to low-income residents in the county. There were 120 bicycles collected at the event, including 50 adult bikes and 70 children's bikes. Well, this is my daughter's uh, bike. This is actually her first bike that we took the training wheels off and so this guy was just sitting down there. I put it together one Christmas morning, that was a Christmas present, so she had to wait months to even try it out and so it's nice to know that somebody else gets to have a crack at it. We as a council believe that people should enjoy the great outdoors and this type of organization, the, the, uh, the uh, literally recycling of, of uh, bicycles allows each of us to enjoy the great outdoors in maybe a different way than we could not uh, necessarily do. And not only do these donation events promote a healthy lifestyle, they also improve the environment. Instead of going to the dump, many of these two-wheeled vehicles end up being an important mode of transportation for someone less fortunate. In Rockville, I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. There are certain buildings in the county whose designs draw our attention. The Montgomery County Planning Department is recognizing those that rise above the rest. Bridget Suiso was there to cover this annual event and find out why good design really matters. Bridget? That's right. This year we expanded the Design Excellence Award program to include Open Spaces and the Director's Legacy Award, which recognizes an iconic building from the last 90 years in Montgomery County.
This is our third annual Design Excellence Award event, and we are so excited to be here to honor some of the best projects in Montgomery County. I really feel like we are seeing the whole Design Excellence Initiative coming into its own and really starting to make a difference. These uh, award ceremonies we've been doing now three years in a row are really just one part of our efforts to promote design excellence in Montgomery County. And in the applications that we're seeing and the kinds of new projects we see coming in, we do see a greater emphasis and a greater attention to design. I really appreciate that the planning department and um, uh, park and planning overall is emphasizing and recognizing examples of buildings that actually enhance the built experience and make it nicer uh, to live here. I think um, we're moving in that direction generally with some of the new architecture and tonight we're recognizing uh, particularly noteworthy examples of that. It's so important how we dress our community affects how we feel. Uh, the parks, the open space, the design of buildings affects people's behavior. I'm absolutely uh, certain of that. And so we're, we're encouraging um, our businesses to create great design, uh, focus on what draws people in, gives them hope, gives them calm, all those things. And I'm sure that, I know that's good for the uh, business community's bottom line, but it's better for our sense of community. Coming up on County Report this week, how Montgomery College is bringing El Salvador into the classroom. And strike up the bands, the Thanksgiving parade will soon be marching into downtown Silver Spring. Those stories and more when we come back. placing you in timeout. And this timeout means big fines, plus you really could have hurt somebody. That's why school buses are being equipped with video cameras to help kids like me stay safe. So respect the bus. Get to MC and we'll get you going. <laughs> Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm on Quinette Crosby. Many MC students share something in common, a Salvadoran heritage. Carolina Galliano has more about how professors are making sure that the culture is part of the lesson plan. Montgomery College kicked off a celebration of Humanities Days with a focus on the country with one of the largest diasporas in our community, El Salvador. We chose El Salvador because so many of our students are from El Salvador, our community Salvadoran, so we have a really deep connection. In March, 18 of us are going to El Salvador. And we have academic partnerships there with the University of El Salvador and with the University of Central America. So we'll be meeting with our colleagues there to talk about the role of the humanities. Through music, advocacy and art, the Consul General of El Salvador, local advocates and a Pulitzer Center journalist gathered at the first of nearly 50 events across all campuses over the next few months. One of the things that makes the country very dangerous is a raging gang war. That gang war started in the U.S. People often overlook that. Certainly American politicians overlook that. Our job is basically as educators to make sure that we know what we need to know about the people who live next door to us. The last five years of Humanities Day celebrations have been made possible by a national endowment for the Humanities Grant to support the systematic integration of other cultures and countries to the study of the humanities. Amy Gumar, who obtained the grant, was recognized with the Humanities Leadership Award. 
Yeah, yeah. A young immigrant artist shared his connection to the theme of the event, home and belonging. Montgomery Keller is, is my home. It makes me feel like at home. I feel safe, I feel peace, you know, I, I like to do art, so I feel free when I do art, so yeah, it's home. For County Report this week, in Silver Spring, Carolina Galeano. Rockville has been working to make sure the LGBTQ community is a priority and it has paid off. Rock 11 Now's Kathy Dantzler explains. Congratulations Rockville, your commitment to the health, welfare, safety and equality of our LGBTQ community has paid off. For the first time, Rockville got a perfect score of 100 on the Human Rights Campaign's 2017 Municipal Equality Index or MEI scorecard. The Mayor and Council set a priority initiative to review existing codes and policies and identify modifications to reinforce LGBTQ non-discrimination. You can check out the list of their initiatives on the city's website at rockvillemd.gov slash priority initiatives. And to view the full MEI report, head to hrc.org slash MEI. Gaithersburg just held its snow rodeo. It is a team building exercise to get their crews road ready for the snow season. This year they invited Rockville to join in for a friendly competition. Take a look. I just want to thank everybody for coming out today. I want to thank the city of Rockville for coming up and joining us in our snow rodeo today. Every year we have the snow rodeo. It's just a day to kind of get our guys back in the mindset of snow removal for the upcoming winter. New this year, we've added a kind of a new twist to the snow rodeos. We've we invited City of Rockville to participate with us. They sent four teams to challenge our four best. Oh, this competition is great because we can uh, see what other uh, municipalities are doing in snow operations to help our operation, and hopefully we can make both of our operations better. We have eight obstacles on this course that basically simulate conditions that our drivers will be faced with in the wintertime. It's a chance to build teamwork, camaraderie. It builds camaraderie between the two-man teams and, and all the other teams that are competing that, uh, you know, you might not work with these guys throughout the course of the year and it sort of, you know, gets everybody involved in, in team building. We're actually having an award this year called the Sydney Cup, which the award's going to be presented by a council member, Sydney Katz from Montgomery County Council, as he represents both Gaithersburg and Rockville. The 2017 winners of the Snow Rodeo Challenge is the city of Gaithersburg. Yeah. Going forward, we're going to incorporate some of the things we're doing here to enhance our uh, training program. It's a fun day to come out, give the guys a little bit of a break while we're getting some training in. Believe it or not, it's almost time for the Montgomery County Thanksgiving Parade. Save the date for Saturday, November 18th from 10 a.m. until noon. The parade takes place in downtown Silver Spring. The route is from Ellsworth to Silver Spring Avenue. Marching bands, floats, balloons, and Latin dancing groups will fill the streets with excitement. This is the only Thanksgiving parade in the D.C. metro area. For more information, visit MontgomeryCountyMD.gov slash rec. Coming up on County Report this week, a new exhibit goes back in time and looks at the county during the 1950s. Plus, we meet our pet of the week. Stay with us. County Report this week will be right back. You're invited to Montgomery County's premier social event, the 32nd Annual Executives Ball, and the Beat Goes On will be held Sunday, December 3rd at the North Bethesda Marriott. Celebrate 32 years of support for the arts and humanities. RSVP and purchase raffle tickets online for your chance to win a 2017 Toyota Prius C. Attendance is not required to win. All proceeds benefit arts and humanities organizations. We'll see you on December 3rd. In Montgomery County, we have a goal to reduce waste and recycle 70% of all waste by 2020. By recycling and reducing waste, we save natural resources and make our community even better. So recycle at home, work, school, everywhere, and keep recycling going. 
For more information, call the Montgomery County, Maryland Division of Solid Waste Services at 311 or visit MontgomeryCountyMD.gov slash recycling. Keep it going. Recycle more now. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Antoinette Crosby. If you're looking for a secure way to get rid of your confidential papers, here's a free event for you. Bring documents that you want to shred and recycle to Clarksburg High School on November 4th from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. All types of papers such as receipts, medical records, tax, and legal documents will be accepted. Paper from three ring binders and spiral notebooks must be removed and plastic or electronic items are not accepted. Residents can bring up to five paper bags or boxes filled with paper. The on-site shredding and recycling services through these events are really just uh, geared towards the single family to our residential sector, single family residents and residents of apartments and condominiums. We do encourage businesses to either uh, work with a private collector for the on-site shredding for those sensitive documents just because we are limited in terms of capacity during these four hour events. Uh, office paper systems brings two trucks to the events and they do fill up when we are busy so if a business comes and they have lots of paper it can definitely overwhelm us during these one day events. This event is sponsored by the Montgomery County Division of Solid Waste Services. For more information, visit MontgomeryCountyMD.gov slash recycling or call 311. Ever wonder what the county was like in the 1950s? Well, there's a new exhibit in Rockville that will take you down memory lane. My MC Media's Mitty Hicks gives us a preview of this fascinating new exhibit. It was an absolute icon, and it was something that everyone who lived here at that time, that everyone went there. It was, it was uh, just a given. Matt Logan, executive director for Montgomery History, is talking about this replica of a hot shop in its new exhibit that will take visitors back in time to witness the boom at the Bill Dawson Museum in Rockville. This one was at Congressional Plaza. Really? Yeah. Or as Logan calls it, the 1950s. We were kicking around a lot of different names, and boom seemed to make sense because you had not only this atomic era where the Cold War, people were worried about bomb shelters and that kind of boom, but we also had the baby boom going on. The population in Montgomery County doubled in the 50s, and that's why Montgomery History's new exhibit showcases the pivotal time for the area. I think people, when they come here, they'll have an opportunity to kind of learn something about the past, but also reflect on, on today's issues. Headlines then were also dominated by international conflict, local school overcrowding, and civil unrest. The fashions, toys, and technology on display will bring back memories for many. Many of the objects that we have here tell sort of a, a, a happier story about life in the 1950s. Well, that was a very difficult period, too, from a civil rights standpoint. The boom display can be seen until July 2018. In Rockville, I'm Mitty Hicks for County Report This Week. Now it's time to meet our pet of the week. Kathy Stanhope joins us from the Montgomery County Animal Services and Adoption Center with more. Kathy? This is Goldie. She is the definitive sweet dog. She is going to make a wonderful addition to almost any family, but we would like her to go to a fairly quiet home because she's such a quiet girl herself. She's just about seven years old. She's got a lot of good years left. She'd make a wonderful walking companion for you. Please give us a call at 240-773-5900 or visit Goldie on the web at montgomerycountymd.gov slash ASD. With that, we close this edition of County Report this week. Remember to like us on Facebook and to join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. We leave you today with images from a recent celebration of Diwali, the Festival of Lights. There were Indian performances, food, and more. A great cultural experience for the entire family. I'm Antoinette Crosby. Thank you for watching.